Hello there. Espresso is commonly known as a drink that is very small, traditionally between one and a half, maybe two and a half ounces, depending on how many shots you have. And it is a coffee drink that is brewed under pressure, typically around nine bars of pressure. It is originally from Italy and it is delicious. I love it. You probably love it if you clicked on this video and it's very fun to make as well. That being said, it's not always affordable. To make. And we've talked about a whole range of machines. You have big machines like this one back here. This is an espresso machine. This is a single group head and it usually ranges about like $1,500. It is, it is quite a pricey machine. Now you do have ones that are on the lower scale. We've talked about those as well. Those can be in, you know, the, the couple hundreds of dollars or even maybe a little bit less to being like 150 to 200. But either way, to achieve espresso, usually there is some sort of pretty significant like monetary investment. And related to this, a question I often get is how do I make espresso at home without investing that much? Because it is a pretty penny. It is a lot of money. And to some people, it's very much worth it. But to some people, maybe not so much. It just all depends where your priorities are. Now, recently I was introduced to something that is called a portable espresso maker. This popped up on one of my feeds one day and I went, huh? <laughs> You're telling me I can carry a tiny espresso machine in my pocket. I can make espresso with it and it is $60. <laughs> it sounds too good to be true, but there is a wide variety of portable espresso makers. I picked up a couple of them and I thought we should test them out today. First of all, to find out if they work as they say they do. Second of all, to see if they make something tasty. And third of all, to find out which one is the best because we have four. They are of comparable price. And I think we should just jump right into it. Now, uh, these are the things I have bought. Let's, let's talk about them a little bit. Now, I feel very official today because I did in fact bring a notebook that has both notes and notes for a score sheet on here because I think we should be accurately keeping track of everything we talk about today. Now, this first one we have here is from Laralink. Now, it is compatible with both pods and ground coffee. And I will make note that we are only gonna be doing the ground coffee method today. All four of these that I have here are good to use with ground coffee, but it's something to pay attention to because while doing my research, there are a fair amount of portable espresso machines that are only usable with pods. So just keep that in mind if this is something you end up venturing into yourself. This lovely next one that we have is from Storesso and it costs $65 US. So that is a little bit more expensive, but still kind of in that general like under $100 range. So that's kind of nice. Now we have a little bit of a mystery manufacturer. This one costs $67. So again, we're still on the higher end and I'll talk a little bit more about it when we open it up because it's kind of interesting. Now, finally, if you have looked in sort of this kind of space before, you might be familiar with this one. This is the Mini Presso and it cost $54. This is the one that initially caught my eye and the one that led us to this journey here today. Now, we're gonna brew with all of these today. And I want to compare and find out which one is my favorite, but we need to compare them accurately. So with that, I have a score sheet here that I'm going to be making notes on for a couple different categories. The first one is going to be overall ease of use. How easy are these to use? How intuitive are they? The second category is going to be obviously taste. How does it taste? How is the mouthfeel of it? How is the texture? Is it a good espresso? And lastly, something I think we should look at is, is it espresso? Because while these all claim to be espresso makers, there's kind of a, a gray area that exists. You know, espresso is something that's pulled under pretty strict parameters. And sometimes the things that these sort of machines say they're going to make isn't what they say they're gonna make. That was a long sentence. <laughs> so we will answer for each one of these as well. Is it actually espresso? I think it is time to dig into these boxes. I think it's time to brew some coffee. And I think it is time to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor for providing us with said coffee. I wanna give a huge thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. With Trade, you can find new coffees from roasters all over the US. With a simple quiz, Trade will find coffees that fit your exact needs and ship them to you straight from the roastery. You can also choose the frequency you want your coffee to arrive at, so you'll never run out and you'll always have the freshest of roasts. Now, after I filled out their quiz, one of the coffees that Trade recommended to me was this wonderful single origin Burundi coffee from Red Bay in San Francisco, California. So while I brew this beautiful coffee with notes of orange blossom and turbinado sugar, I also wanna let you know that when you finish your bag of coffee, you can rate it on Trade so they can continue to tailor the selections of coffee that they send to you. Also, Trade ships all of their coffee in compostable packaging, and they guarantee that you'll love your first coffee. But hey, even if you don't, they'll even ship you out a different bag for free. And if all of that doesn't convince you, then let me tell you that as my viewer, you'll get your 
your first bag for free when you sign up with Trade at my exclusive link below. Just click the link in my description, take the quiz, and you'll be on your way. Thank you again to Trade for the tasty coffee that we'll be using today and for sponsoring the video. All right, let's get into our first one. Now I have my water boiling off to the side. I also have a nice lovely pile of finely ground coffee. So let's talk about what was inside the box. The only thing in front of me right now that wasn't inside the box was the coffee, of course, and then the scale, which we will be using to accurately measure everything. So since we're using ground coffee, we have three main parts here, along with some accessories. We have a lovely little bag, which I will set to the side. We, we don't need this right now. We have a little instruction booklet, and then we have the, the body of our espresso machine, if you will. This is gonna be our reservoir that's going to catch our espresso. This is gonna sit at the bottom and act as a cup of sorts. Now this middle part is kind of acting as our group head. Uh, there's a couple different pieces to it. Uh, you actually remove this little canister right here. You can see it has nice little holes over here for even water dispersion, which is nice. You take it off, you dump your coffee in, you can see there's a tiny metal filter underneath and you pop it back on, pop it back in its happy little home there. Uh, and then you set it, on top like that. This right here is going to be the water reservoir for your hot water. You pour your water right in there and then you attach it on the top. Now, at this point you might be asking, how does one achieve any sort of pressure with something like this? Well, it all has to do with this right here. It has a plunger. <laughs> Very fun, which will ideally build pressure and then push the water through the ground espresso like one would in a machine like that, but you're doing it yourself with your hand. Now, I took a look at the box and this claims to have up to 20 bars of pressure. That's a lot. And that is hopefully a good sign because if we get close to that, perhaps we'll have something espresso-like. Now, my water is just about done heating up, so let's get everything assembled. Real fast, just to make sure we are reviewing our instructions, it's pretty simple. You, you are supposed to use one exact scoop of coffee for your for your espresso shot, which I know how the coffee community feels about scoops. We're gonna follow instructions, but I will I will weigh it out, so have no fear. We will also go by weight here. <laughs> After that, you attach all your pieces back together. You fill up your water tank with hot water, which I will also weigh so we can figure that out. Again, assemble everything together and then start plunging. According to our instruction booklet, the compression frequency, or how many times you plunge, should be kept at one press every one to three seconds. That's kind of a wide range. Uh, I don't have any other information though, so we will test this out. We'll see how it goes. I've ground this for espresso like I would in a traditional machine. And you're supposed to turn it up. And then apparently you're able to use this as sort of a, a tamping scenario. And perhaps I have overfilled this slightly. I have tamped down. We have nine and a half grams of coffee in here. So nine and a half grams in. It's a good marker. Putting our little lid on. Back inside we go. The next thing we have is our water tank. Inside there is a max fill line, so we will be filling to that. That amount is approximately 68 grams. Now uh, I am supposed to just set this back on top and then we're supposed to start plunging once every one to three seconds. I would say we are about 20 plunges in. I'm starting to see liquid drop into our little little cup at the bottom, which is very exciting. The liquid does in fact look espresso-like. Quite a workout, indeed. All right, I think we have reached the end of our water. Let's take a look at what we have in our base. This is so exciting. Let me pour this into something and get a little better look at. Now there is in fact a slight crema that has formed. This is very exciting. This is this is good. That means there was there was some modicum of pressure <laughs> applied to it. Now, smell-wise, it does smell like an espresso. It smells like a little bit of a, of a weaker one. There's there's a little bit of sourness to it that is not entirely pleasant, but it smells like espresso. So let's get a spoon. Let's get some stirring. Let's get some tasting. Also, I would like to share that we're going to be using um, stirring spoons from James and Umeko's recent collaboration, which is very exciting. These are <laughs> quite adorable. The body of it already looks more watery than I would like from an espresso. Flavor-wise, that's kind of nice. The texture of this is, is a lot thicker than I was expecting. I would describe it as kind of being velvety in body. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty heavy body to it. There's a little bit of sourness on the end, that's what I was smelling in the aromatics, but there is some nice sweetness to this. Now, one thing I would say is I think the, the proportion of water to espresso needs to be adjusted a bit. I think this is a little bit more watery than I would prefer, yet with it being watery, the texture 
is very nice. Not as, that's surprising. Usually that's not the case. Usually uh, when your espresso is watery, it ends up being like tea-like and kind of loose and like not as like thick and rich and creamy as you might want an espresso to be. Another critique I would give it is that this is not at all the temperature that I would be expecting from an espresso if I was served one inside a cafe or if I pulled one myself from a machine. This is, this is a lot cooler to be sure. All in all, pleasantly surprised. So let's write down what we've gathered in our notes. So for our Lara Link, $45 portable espresso machine. I would say the ease of making this out of five, I would give it three and a half. I think it was a little bit messy. I can, however, appreciate that they gave us a scoop. Since they did not give us any sort of like direct measurements of how much coffee to put in, I think it's nice that they included a scoop that is just their like baseline and makes transferring the coffee into the little container a lot easier. And the scoop also doubles as a tamp, so that's all nice. The temperature is less than what I'd like, and that has to do with how long that hot water just sat and lost heat inside the machine, if you will. I would give the temperature a one and a half. Taste-wise, kind of tricky. There was some really nice components of it, that being like the mouthfeel and the body, but there was also some sourness, some wateriness that happened because of the recipe that they recommended. So overall taste, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give a healthy, I think three and a half feels right. The final question is, is it espresso? I would say based on everything we gathered here, this is a decent espresso substitute. I think it is very spro-like in qualities. And I think with a little bit of a tighter water to coffee ratio, I think you'd have something very, very nice. So I'm gonna say, yes, this can be espresso. <laughs> <laughs> now let's move on to our next one. Next up, we have our Stressa, which if you'll remember is slightly more expensive than the one we just looked at. And it looks like the build is pretty much the same, but it is $65 versus about $45. So for that much of an increase, I'm expecting a better product. I'm also expecting some more bells and whistles on this one. So let's see what we have. Now on this bottom component, uh, we again had just a little like glass reservoir for your final espresso. Uh, but on this one, you do have measurements for how much, you know, fluid is at the bottom, which I would consider that a bell and or whistle, kind of nice. And then of course you have your top hot water reservoir. And then again, Got a little pump action here. And the, the lovely, lovely people at Stresso have included with it a scoop. <laughs> so we will use their scoop, but we will also measure. Kindly enough, they did also give a little bit more detailed instructions, which I appreciate. I would also consider that a bell and or whistle. For this, they recommend using seven to 10 grams of coffee and then pressing it down tightly with the spoon, which is, you know, our scoop and or tamper. Then they are recommending 50 to 80 milliliters of hot water. That is quite a range, but as we discovered with the previous espresso, we need to have a little bit of like a tighter ratio. So I'm gonna go closer to about probably nine to 10 grams of coffee. I'll give you exact measurements when I get there. Uh, and then I will probably be going closer to like 60 milliliters of fluid. Now, I think this one was the funniest out of all the things I looked at. If you go to their Amazon web listing for this product, there are some absolutely phenomenal, not at all doctored or Photoshopped uh, images <laughs> of this in use. Okay, I've added one scoop of espresso. This came out to be about nine and a half grams, which is in that ideal ratio. So good to go. 65 milliliters of water. And uh, once more, it's time to work for it. Oh, that was <laughs> explosive. Now this was a much, much faster extraction. I would say this took about 40 seconds, whereas our previous one, the other espresso machine maker that was very similar built to this one, took about one and a half to two minutes, which is a very long time in the espresso world. I'm expecting this one to be a much hotter drink. All right, buddy, let's get you into something a little bit more drinkable. All right, once more, we have a crema that has formed on top, which is very nice. I'm gonna stir this in, we'll give it some smells, and we'll give it some tastes. Smell-wise, it does smell less sour initially. It also doesn't smell like much, so there is that. Much warmer espresso. Uh, the temp on this is, is a lot better. Mouthfeel-wise, this one isn't nearly as pleasant as that first one. Even though time-wise, it seemed like we got a better extraction, this tastes 
quite a bit more watery than that first one did. This one actually has a lot more of those kind of tea-like qualities in not a good way, in a, in a slightly more unpleasant way. Taste-wise, it also isn't nearly as strong. I think we just extracted far too quickly with this one, which is unfortunate because it looked a lot better. But I think that's one of those things where it's kind of like, looks can be deceiving. Just because it looks like a good espresso doesn't mean it is. Now, this one, again, doesn't have some of those like sour or over extracted kind of bitter notes, but it also doesn't really have notes at all. So some pros and some cons here. <laughs> Let's take some scores. Temperature wise, this was a lot better. Temp wise, I'm gonna give this a four. Ease of brewing, how easy was this to use? How many nice bells and whistles did it have? I am also gonna give it a four. I think this was a lot nicer than the machine that came before it. However, then we get down to taste which is where this starts to lack. I'm gonna give this a one for taste. This is not very enjoyable. It doesn't taste bad in the sense that it isn't like acrid or super bitter. It doesn't like make me wanna pucker up, but it just doesn't taste like anything, which for an espresso, I kinda want my espresso to like punch me in the face a little bit. Like this is supposed to be a very, very powerful drink. The question is, is it espresso? I'm gonna give it a maybe. I think if you are making perhaps a milk drink or like something like that, I think one might be able to get away with using this as an espresso substitute. However, if you are looking to drink an espresso or make an Americano, I do not think this is a good espresso substitute. So there are contingencies and I'll give it a maybe. Now our third one, kind of different. Kind of interesting. If you'll notice, I have a charging cord in my hand, and this is because this one isn't, in fact, going to be needing any plunging from my side. This is a rechargeable, battery-powered, miniature espresso portable machine. Lots of words there. However, I have noticed something. We may have been deceived, <laughs> in fact, because while online this is listed as a portable espresso maker, what I'm looking at here says portable coffee maker, but can it also make espresso if we just fill up to the minimum water line? Probably not, but maybe, and we will see. Now the bones of this are a little bit simpler. You again have your little coffee container slash reservoir that we will be putting our ground coffee in. You have a fine like sieve filter sort of thing around the rim of it. You pop this back on and we will drop it back in. We'll screw it into the bottom of our water reservoir, place it on top, and then you have your bottom piece, which again, just acts as a catch-all and or a cup if you would like to use it that way. Now, this one was our most expensive machine at around $67. I will say already, it does kind of feel the cheapest. This is just a hard plastic. It's not a very thick plastic. It's kind of easy to bend and warp, which doesn't always bode well when you are using a lot of very hot water with it. Now with this one, we were not given any sort of recipe. It's up to your best judgment. So I'm going to, kind of like we did before, just fill this with tightly packed coffee. I'm gonna place it in, and then I'm going to make my own judgment call about how much water we are going to add. Because if you don't tell me what to do, I will make up my own rules. <laughs> Since this is a slightly larger capacity capsule than any of the previous ones, I'm gonna be adding about 12 grams of espresso to it. Locks in very nicely. Now it's time to add our water. I've added 70 grams of water, which is a little bit in between our minimum marking and our four ounce marking. It goes on and now the magic happens, question mark. This is highly embarrassing. I didn't actually put batteries inside it. <laughs> now the magic happens. <laughs> amazing what uh, energy can do. Well, to my dismay, it did not beep, but it did stop making sounds and the light did turn off. So I would say it's ready to go. <laughs> oh boy. Well, shall I show you what I have found inside our, our cup? Perhaps I shall. So let's taste it. <laughs> I'm gonna go straight into grating. I think we can all very confidently say that this is not espresso. In no world would this ever be espresso or an espresso substitute. So we have been lied to, but that happens. We're gonna roll with the punches. Let's see what we have here. It is a pleasant coffee tea. This does taste like tea, in fact. In no world is this even close to even drip coffee, which is a little bit shocking. I don't need any more time. Let's grade this thing. The temperature is all right. I will give it that. It, it is a decent level of warmth. So I'll give temperature a generous, generous two. The ease and intuition needed to make this drink, I'm gonna give it a whopping 
zero. I would say the build of this was confusing and also more inexpensive than any of the other ones, even though the price tag was more than any of the other ones. Now we move on to taste, which I'm gonna give a very generous zero. And we move on to our final question. Is it espresso? No, <laughs> not in the slightest is this espresso. It is perhaps essence of coffee, I think is the best thing I can say about it. It's not unpleasant, but it's not anything that I would call close to what we were looking for. So that was fun. Let's move on to our very last one. Okay, so this one I am pretty excited about, honestly. I've seen this one pop up quite a bit and I've wanted to get my hands on it for a while. So the fact that we get to test it out now is very exciting. So let's look at the bill. Similarly to the other ones, you have a larger carafe for your water. You'll put your water up on here. You have your main body where you'll be building the pressure. You've also got another little plunger. So we're putting in the work here. <laughs> then you have your little little basket for your coffee with a metal filter at the bottom. They have included us a lovely scoop here. They've also included a little cleaning tool. So that is a nice bell and or whistle. And then finally, we have our little cup that is gonna be our reservoir for our finished espresso. One thing I will say about this one is that I'm a little bit sad that our cup that we will be drinking our espresso from, or ideally one would be drinking their espresso from, is not glass. This is just a hard plastic. I understand why. This is meant to be something used for travel and or camping and or it could go into places where it could get easily broken. So having something that would be glass, might not be the best option. That being said, glass is a very nice thing to drink from and you don't risk the potential of having like weird, either chemically or plastic like aftertaste in your drink. So that's a downside, I suppose, but with the context of it being for perhaps outdoors, it makes sense. Now they have two recommendations here. First recommendation is using eight grams of dry coffee. Second recommendation is using about 65 to 70 grams of water. First off, back to our lovely, Lovely scoop. Eight grams of espresso in. And then, because I didn't read the instructions clearly enough, this doesn't actually reattach to this. One is supposed to just aim. Instructions say after our first six plunges, the cabin, cabin will have pressurized and we'll be able to start pulling our espresso. So one. Two, three, four, five, six. One really has to like maintain a good amount of grip strength to make these sort of things. I sense that we have reached the end. We have something in here. We've also created a mess. <laughs> Surprise. A light crema has formed. It is very light, but it is there. Let's taste. This, I think, smells the best out of all of them. Uh, it smells pretty chocolatey. It smells very rich. Uh, there's a lot of like coffee-ness that's coming out of it. It's kind of nice. I think this is the most balanced one that I've had so far. The body is kind of a medium body. It's not especially heavy. It's not especially light or tea-like either. There is a good balance between kind of the bitterness of the coffee and some sweetness on the front. It's very pleasant. There isn't too much that's sour about this. Actually, you know, if I was to compare it to something, this tastes a bit more like what one would get from a mocha pot rather than an espresso machine with the added benefit that it had some sort of like formed crema on top, which does make it seem more espresso-like at the very least. That's not half bad though. That's, that's, that's pretty tasty. I could see myself finishing this. Now for our grading out of five, I would give the temperature a two. I wish it was a little bit warmer, but it's not unpleasant. There's still a good amount of heat left in there ease of making it. I think this one out of all of them uh, requires the most hand-eye coordination. The fact that you are aiming your espresso into your cup is not something that I have a ton of experience with and was a little bit tricky. But that being said, once I got the hang of it, it's totally fine. I would also say that this is one of the quicker of the espressos. It took about seven plunges and then after that my espresso came out and it was a pretty quick extraction after that, which is nice. Very efficient. Taste wise, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go up there. I'm gonna give it a four. Overall, I was pretty happy with how well balanced this was. It came out with a pretty decent body. And when we look at our question of, is it espresso? I think this could be a very solid espresso substitute. If you were on the go, I need something like that. So I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> We've gone through all four of our portable espresso machines. Again, I'm using machine in quotations because make of it what you will, what we have used today. Now, let me add up the scores of everything. Let's find out which one 
was the best. So we have our four portable espresso machines that we use today. Let me tell you the scores of each of them. For our first one, the Lara Link, we have 8.5 out of 15. For our Stresso, we have nine out of 15. For our unnamed, unspoken one, we have a, a two. <laughs> <laughs> out of 15. And for our mini presso, we have again a 9 out of 15. So we have two front runners here. We have these two right here. Now, genuinely, I think both of these make a pretty okay espresso substitute. One can debate in the comments for hours, and I'm sure many of you will, what the qualifications of espresso are. Whether these made espresso or whether they didn't is kind of up to you, because while there are general parameters, coffee itself is very fluid, no pun intended, <laughs> and there are many definitions for the many different drinks that can be created with it outside of the, like, the very traditional staunch settings, because as I said many times before, coffee is kind of what you want it to be. So if these make what you would like to consider espresso, so be it in my book. That being said, I think these both make a viable espresso substitute product. And with them being portable, on the go, easy to take with you, and fairly easy to operate, I think they're a pretty decent product. Both of these have a very nice build. They both feel very solid. And I think for the range of $50 to $60, I think adding these to, let's say, your car or your camping setup or your travel setup or whatever have you, this is a pretty good investment. With that being said, I will link both of these in the description down below if you would like to check them out. Again, a huge thank you to Trade for providing us with a lovely coffee that we were able to enjoy many different ways today. I think I'm gonna go sip the rest of the coffee I have here and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I'm Morgan Drinks Coffee on pretty much all the platforms that I'm active on. You can find me here once a week as well as some shorts. <laughs> you can also find me on Instagram and TikTok at Morgan Drinks Coffee where I post almost every single day. There are plenty of links in the description down below, both things I mentioned today and also just other fun random things. So feel free to check that out. I'm gonna go have this and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone. <laughs>